Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Eric and this is part five in my mobile app tutorial series for Godot 3.1. In this project, we're building a mobile application that can be exported to an APK for Android or an I think it's an IPA for iOS. It's pretty straightforward to create apps like this in Godot. I hope the tutorials have been really helpful so far. They've been a lot of fun to make and I'm excited to keep going with the series. So the last time, I think all we did was make this simple menu move around a little bit. So I'm actually going to run the project. Pull this up. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So if I hit start, it just pulls up easy, medium, and hard. Oh, and I've still got some of these highlight things, and we can take those off. Or you can leave them. That's up to you. So I think in this video, we're going to add a back button just to go back to the start menu. It's kind of the same thing we've already done, but we'll throw it in there. And then we're going to create a parent projectile object or node or scene, I guess, however you want to say it, so that we can create the up to nine different projectiles in our game. So I'm going to go to our difficulty node here, which contains our VBox container for these easy, medium, and hard buttons. We're just going to duplicate the hard, I think, because these buttons aren't doing anything yet. We're going to name this back. We're going to go to the text for the duplicated hard button. We're going to change it to back. So when I duplicated it, it didn't actually put it on top of the hard button like it normally would because it's in this VBox container. So I automatically put it below these. I don't know if we can put even more separation just for this single one, but I think we can if we just increase this. Yeah. So if we go into this back button, I don't want it to be below the other difficulty options just because it seems like it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be confused with just another difficulty button. So we're going to go to the Y position of this button and we're just going to move it down. I guess 300 might work. Let's do 280. Just a little bit of separation so that when we run the game and we hit start, if we want to go back, oh, well that did not work. So maybe you can't do that if it's in a VBox container. Maybe it automatically places it there. We'll look more into that in the future. That might be something I have to figure out on my own. So for now, I guess we'll just leave it where it was. Let me move it back. I think it was 213, yeah. So even though it's not exactly where we want it to be right now, we can still add the functionality for the button. I think I've been putting the start menu calls. Let me make this bigger before I forget. I've been putting the start menu button calls in this start no 2D script. So I think I'm going to keep that pattern going with... Actually, no, I haven't. I've been putting them in menu buttons. So that's where we need to put the difficulty as well. We're just going to put it right here where on start is. So the back button, go to node, pressed under the node tab, connect, and then we're going to connect to menu buttons just like we did with the start button. So here it is. I guess we can remove this print debug statement. We're actually just going to copy this because we're basically just doing the opposite of what we did for the start button. Yeah, so when we press start, we're going to move start to the left by 576, and we're going to move difficulty to the left also by 576 because it was initially at 576. So we're just returning these to their original values. And the reason that's 576 is because that is the width of our project viewport. So I think that's all we need to do, and we'll be able to hit start, that menu comes over, we hit back and it goes back to where it was. So you can just bounce back and forth. That's all we're going to do for the menu. I just wanted to give a little refresher on the way that these buttons work. Now for the projectile parent that we're going to create, we're going to go to scene. We're going to do new scene. I don't know why it still has this GD script up, but over here under scene, there's no root node. This is the new scene. So we're going to hit 2D scene. We've got a node 2D. We'll rename that to particle, or not particle, projectile. 
So this projectile node needs two children. The first child is going to be a sprite. So you can search for sprite. And we'll add something to that in a second. Well, I guess we can go ahead and do that. I can't remember. Yeah, I've already pulled in the sprites. I think I did that in maybe the first or second video. I've got all these different projectiles in here. We're not pulling any of these into this parent projectile. Those are actually going to be in the inherited projectile scenes. That'll make a lot more sense in the next video, but essentially right now we're creating this parent scene of projectile that's going to contain all the code and the node structure that we need for each of these projectiles. And then these are going to be applied individually to all of the inherited scenes of this parent. And again, that'll make a lot more sense when you see it. So we got the sprite. We need to add one more thing. Add another child and look for area 2D. 2D area for detection and 2D physics influence. We're not actually going to use any physics, but we are going to use, we're, we're going to be using its area, I think area entered signal to detect collisions. In order to detect collisions, we need to add a collision shape. So you actually get this warning. Let's see what it says. Node configuration warning. This node has no shape, so it can't collide. So the area 2D itself is not a shape. We have to add one. So we add a child to area 2D. We look for collision. There's there's a few different options, but I'm going to go with collision shape 2D. So it also has a warning, and that's because we haven't assigned a shape to the collision shape 2D. So if you just click on collision shape 2D, go to the inspector, come down to shape, you'll see that it's empty in the inspector tab. We'll click on that. You can choose pretty much any of these you want. I'm going to go with new rectangle shape 2D. We've created that, and I think you should be able to see it, even though we don't have a sprite. This little teal, I think, or maybe, yeah, I think that's, well, it's a little darker than teal. That square is our collision shape for this area 2D. So it doesn't matter what size our sprite is, that's the area of our collision shape. If I edit the size, I think I could do this. If I edit the scale to two of the collision shape, then it just goes up. So changing the sprite will not change your collision shape, I don't think. Just be aware of that as you're building out potentially more complicated collision systems. So this scene has a sprite, area 2D, collision shape 2D. It needs two scripts. The first script is going to be for the parent node projectile. So we're just going to add projectile script. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have access to the global node. And that statement can be a little bit confusing because by its very nature, we definitely have access to the global node, but we want to make sure that the global variables and properties have been loaded by the game before anything happens with this script. If the load order kind of gets out of whack and the resources in the global area are not ready yet and we start calling them, it's going to cause issues with our game. So we can say on ready var global equals, I think global. I think that will work. I don't think we have to do get node. But we're going to use on ready just to make sure that that global script or that global scene that we've auto loaded will be ready. The other thing we're going to add is var y speed equals zero. We're going to reference this y speed when we're updating the position of this projectile. And that's regardless of which way it's going. So that's actually why we've given it a variable so that we can create a projectile in any position in the game and then we can give it kind of a direction to go. So under ready, I don't think we're doing anything there. We're gonna, actually we do need process. So you can unhighlight the process. That's where we're gonna be updating the position. So position.y plus equals y speed. Oops, y speed. We're gonna to go to the area 2D. We're gonna create a script. Area 2D is fine. And I don't think we're doing much here. I think the only thing we're doing is adding an area type. 
that's going to vary between the different projectile types. So export string var area type. Save. Oh, I guess we can save this. Let's save projectile actually under the scenes folder. I don't know if you've seen this before, if we've done this in these videos, but export essentially gives us access to that variable in the editor. So if I click on area 2D, you can see area type is now under script variables in the inspector tab. So we could go in here and we could add green. And then later on, when the, when the projectiles hit each other and they return a collision object that they've collided with, we'll be able to pull that area type and get the color of the variable. We're gonna leave that blank for now because we'll fill that in for the inherited or the, the, the children of this parent. So we have that script, we have this. I feel like I'm forgetting. Oh, so the area 2D, since I'm talking about the fact that it's going to be returned, we have to send out a signal when another area enters this area. So area entered under the node tab, connect, and we're gonna to connect to projectile. This method on area 2D area entered is fine. If you wanna change the, the default, that's fine too, I usually do. I'm not going to be able to demonstrate how this works until the next video, but we'll go ahead and set up the code so that we'll be ready. So if get node area 2D dot area type equals area dot area type. So we're, we're saying we're grabbing this. Remember, we're in this projectile script right now. So we're grabbing our area 2D in our current projectile. We're getting the area type, so let's just pretend that's green. And then we're matching it, or seeing if it matches with the area type of this area object. Now I realize I'm saying area a lot, but the parameter for this function is the area that we have collided with. So we're just checking the color of the other projectile. So if that happens, we wanna delete both of the projectiles if they're the same. Q-Free is gonna release the resources claimed by those scenes that have been instanced in our game. So Q-Free. We're gonna add a little bit more to this function when we have it set up, but for right now, that is enough. So the other thing we have to do, well, I'll leave the rest of it out for now and we'll, we'll add it in when we get a little bit further along in the video. We didn't go over a whole lot in this video, but I am trying to keep it as short as I can. Just like the videos before this, we're building a really good foundation so that when we actually start adding features to the game, they're gonna be really easy to implement. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, remember to hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment letting me know what you like, what you wanna see in the future. Like I've said before, I'm having a lot of fun making these videos, but I wanna make sure that they're useful to anyone that's watching. If you are watching, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. That's all I got for now. I'll see you next time.